This is the story time about how one mistake cost me over $6,000 of profit in my print on demand business and how you can avoid making that same mistake yourself. If you're not familiar with my story, then let's quickly go back to the beginning for some context. The year was 2020 and it's October. I've been selling print on demand on Etsy for six months now and had really started to see some traction in my business. I had sold $42,296 in revenue between May and October. And these sales really were kind of a mixed bag of different niches and different types of design styles as I was heavily in my testing phase to try and figure out what really works and sells on Etsy. My profit margins at this time were about 20 to 30%. So let's say I made around $10,000 profit total within my first six months. I had probably close to a thousand listings at this point with no real obvious best sellers. I just had a lot of listings that had sold anywhere from 20 to 50 times. And just for fun, let's look at a few honorable mentions. Starting with this Father's Day listing, this design was one of the first listings that I ever really sold. And between that May and October timeframe is when I filtered these results from. This listing had sold 28 times for $500 $168 in revenue. My next one is this teacher sweatshirt. Back in 2020, rainbows were all the rage and just putting some simple text underneath it. And this one ended up selling 32 times for $927 in revenue. This next one was actually one of the first mistakes that I made in my print on demand business. And you might not be able to spot what that mistake is, but this design, oh my God, please make it stop 2020, was kind of a funny election shirt. Um, now that's 2024 and it's an election year again, this is a great niche to get into. And I'll even link a video down below that is the five niches guaranteed to sell in 2024 and hint, election shirts are on there. But the reason why this design was a mistake is for two reasons. The first reason is that I actually bought this design. So I bought it from someone on Etsy that said I had commercial rights to use it and I put it on an item for sale. But what I didn't know at the time is that under Etsy seller's guidelines, you actually can't just purchase designs and put it on an item for print on demand and sell it because Etsy really wants there to be unique items on the platform. And so you are required to have some kind of hand in the process. That means either making the shirts yourself at home or actually making the designs. And since here on my channel, I teach how to do print on demand, where you use a company like Printify, who actually prints and ships all of the items for you after you get an order, that means we have to actually custom make every single design. The second mistake that I made with this design is that I made this design way too big in Printify where you can put the print area. I filled up that spot as much as possible and I had no idea how big I really made it until I got my first review on this product and I got a five-star review. This person loved it. They said they had a great experience, but I could not believe how gigantic this design was on this shirt. And so from then on, I started making my designs 12 to 13 inches across the chest total instead of the 15 or 16 inches that I used in this particular design. The next shirt that I sold in that time frame was this other presidential election shirt. If you watch any of the presidential debates, sometimes people will say something that's a little funny that you'll see a lot of memes about. And if you can get a shirt for sale immediately on the platform that has those funny words, which in this case was, will you shut up, man? Um, I sold 17 of these for $400 in revenue in about a week, but then it never sold again. So you really want to have a mixture of things in your store that could sell forever, they're more evergreen, or something that could sell any time of the year for the next years to come. But it's also a good idea sometimes to jump on some of these trends. This next design is another political design of something that a politician said that was funny that I put on a shirt right away and I sold about 32 of these in one week. And again, it never sold again, but it was fun to kind of hop on that trend. But the mistake that I made with this design was not understanding copyrights and trademarks. I really didn't have a good grasp on how important those were when I first got started in my business. So in this case, I was infringing on Shark Week. And that is a brand that is a business. I think it's owned by the History Channel. You can't say Shark Week on things. 
And so even replacing the A with the shape of Michigan, because this is Michigan's governor that made this comment, um, that's still not enough. This shirt was infringing. So that's why I'm trying to show you guys just some examples of lessons that I learned in those first six months. But don't worry, we're still getting to the $6,000 mistake in just a minute. My next few designs are these kind of more celestial designs. I wanted to show these because this design is super simple. It's just a graphic. I sold it 15 times for $326 in revenue. And these graphic only shirts really can sell well. Now you do have to make sure that you have the commercial usage rights to sell just a graphic on a shirt like this. And so understanding those is also very important. I thought this one was cute. This next hoodie, very similar. I sold seven of these for $228 in total revenue. And then we have here, since I saw that those celestial and kind of like woodsy type vibe ones were selling well just kind of on their own i used that same graphic pack that i got and i made my first batch the red shirts now this taking off was so exciting because these 33 orders didn't come in one by one they started coming in in groups of four five six shirts at a time and that gave me some of my first really big what they felt like at the time days of selling on etsy and so you haven't gotten into group shirts of any kind Honestly, if I could give you no other advice, it would be to get into group matching shirts because it can grow your store so much faster since every customer is buying multiple items instead of just one. I hope you enjoyed that blast from the past of some of my old Etsy listings. I've never actually shared any of my Etsy designs on YouTube before, so I hope that you guys found that super fun and interesting of what I actually sold in my first six months and what that could look like for you. Well, now back onto the backstory of the mistake. Back Back to November of 2020, I ended up selling over $70,000 in revenue in just the one month of November. So between May and October, I sold $42,000 total between all of those months. And then all of a sudden in November, I sold 70,000. It was amazing. I actually had a famous person share one of my Christmas sweaters on her Instagram story. And so that was super fun and super exciting. Now you could say that I got lucky, but here are a few of my favorite quotes about luck. Luck is a matter of preparation meeting opportunity. When I work 14 hours a day, seven days a week, I get lucky. And I'm a greater believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. If you never put in the hard work and make hundreds of listings, test and learn new things every day, or even just get started in the first place, then obviously you'll never get lucky. Overall in November, I had a 29% profit margin, which equated to $20,000 in take home profit. That's after all expenses, but before taxes. This includes things like paying Printify to print and ship all the products, purchasing mock-ups, which are the images that you put your designs onto to pretend that they're already made, paying for Etsy's fees for selling on their platform, and using Etsy's advertising system to promote my products. But where was the mistake, you ask? Well, let's fast forward to November of 2021. I worked really hard and even ended up quitting my full-time job in June of 2021 to go full-time with Print On Demand and take it very seriously to prepare for Q4, which is just the last quarter of the year, the last three months, which is a notorious time for getting extra sales on Etsy since there's an increased traffic due to holiday shopping. And when November 2021 came, I was ready to beat my 2020 numbers. I had prepared, I had planned, and I ended up selling over $100,000 in revenue in just one month on Etsy. I was so pumped to have outsold the previous November by $30,000 in revenue. So when the 1st of December came and I had all of the numbers to do my income and expense for the month, I sat down and calculated everything out and then noticed my mistake. I realized that I only made a 23% profit margin, which meant my take home pay was only $23,000. Now, don't get me wrong, I was still super grateful, and I'm not saying that overall this was horrible or anything, but 
The mistake was that when Printify raised their prices for the sweatshirts, they raised the shipping prices a little bit, and they even charged a small upcharge for the shipping by 25 cents for the holiday season. Some of those changes happened over the year between the Novembers, and I just kind of ignored the emails and didn't think that it added up to that big of a difference. But all in all, it ended up being about $2 more expensive for me to sell every single sweatshirt that I sold. And when you times that by how many sales I had for the month, it ended up being about $6,000 in lost profits because I didn't raise my prices when Printify had price increases. So now that you know my big mistake of how I lost $6,000 in profit, let's go over some ways that you can avoid this mistake yourself. Number one is pricing your items intentionally from the start. This is going to be a mixture of doing competitor research on other stores that are selling the exact same type of product as you. So say if I'm selling sweatshirts, you wanna go find five or 10 stores that have done really well selling sweatshirts and see what price they're selling their items for. This will give you a good idea of what price for that product converts really well. And then taking that information to find a price that's not only competitive, but also profitable for you as a business. I'll link a video down below where I do a deep dive on how to actually price your print on demand products, just like I'm talking about in this video. So I'll link that down in the description and I'll also put the video up next when you get to the end of this one. Number two is pay attention to price changes. If you use Printify as your production partner, like I do to print and ship all my items, then you'll get an email from Printify anytime they raise any prices. They'll send you a sheet like this that you can sort and look through at the types of products and the production partners that you use and see exactly what the difference might be. And even sometimes the prices will go down. Like this last year, Printify lowered the prices for the Comfort Color shirts by Swift POD, and that was a super awesome surprise. And then number three is when needed, update your prices right on Etsy. You can do this in bulk right on Etsy super easily. And don't be afraid to raise your prices. If your prices are going up, that means thousands of other sellers' prices are going up as well. And a one or $2 difference isn't going to make that huge of a difference in the long run. You could even tack on a dollar onto shipping and a dollar onto the item to make it not seem like such a drastic difference. To quickly and easily bulk update your shipping profile price on all of your listings, you can come to Etsy and click settings, go to shipping settings, and here you'll see your, all of your shipping profiles. So if you use the same shipping profile for all of your listings, then you can just click this edit button and right here, you can change the price that you charge for shipping and click save profile. Now I don't share my print on demand store publicly here on YouTube because that's a lot of people looking at and analyzing the exact same store. So I'm using my mock-up store here as an example. You can quickly and easily update all of your pricing right on Etsy as well. You don't have to do this on Printify. The prices that you've originally listed it for with Printify don't need to match what they have on Etsy. That doesn't matter to Printify. They don't need that exact information. They are always going to charge you the same for the item that they're charging for it. So to bulk do your pricing, you can come up to this top corner and you can click all of your listings, come to editing options and click edit prices. Now here you can increase by a dollar amount you can decrease, you can set a new amount, or you can do percentage increases or percentage decreases. Now, if you have items that are priced differently, like say t-shirts and sweatshirts, depending on how you have them in your sections, you can actually go section by section and do that instead. So if I click on this section of 120 listings, then I could select all 120 and edit these all at once, then go to the next category and edit those all at once. And then number four is that you need to track your income and expenses. I never want you to get to the end of the year and realize that you lost money in your business and that you could have made changes along the way if you had just known. So on the first of every month, I go and fill out my income and expense report and figure out exactly how much that I actually made in profit. And I do actually sell my income and expense report for $20. I'll link it down in the description. It's just a nice, easy Google Sheets document where you can put in the different expenses that you have for your business. You can put in how much you made, 
for the month and it will come out and tell you what your total profit was after all expenses. This can be a great place to house all of your expenses so it makes it easier for tax time for your accountant when you get to the end of the year and you don't have to go back and find all of these expenses. It also has a year to date summary tab so you can see exactly how much profit you've made every single month. And then it even has a built-in Etsy profit calculator that uses the Etsy fees right here in this table. And so you can put in how much you want to sell your item for, how much it costs you to print and ship it on Printify, and it'll tell you how much profit per item that you'll actually make selling this item. Oh, hello, Jack. Say hello to the subscribers. We're actually recording right now, you pretty little thing. But I hope that you guys learned some good lessons from the mistakes that I've made in my print-on-demand business, like having to update the prices of items when Printify does price increases, learning more about trademarks and copyrights to protect your business, and then also not to purchase designs and sell them in your store. And if you enjoyed this video, since the weather is getting just a little bit nicer, then let me know what your favorite summer activity is down below. If you like to play pickleball or go swimming, I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't just yet, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe since it does really support my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. And I'll see you in the next one, but I'll link that video up next that I talked about that tells you how to price your print-on-demand products to make sure that you're making a profit.